How do you do? How do you do? I never thought that I'd live to see the day that a girl could get Drogo Gaines with all his millions to the altar. <laughs> My Helen has done it. I'll believe it when I see it. My Helen is a very smart girl. My Agnes was in the running, but what chance did she have when he never kept her out after 10 o'clock at night? <laughs> well... <laughs> Look. Young man, what is all this nonsense? Uh, oh my goodness. Maybe you better get a doctor quick. Yes, yes, of course. <gasps> Dr. Johnson, will you come in, please? Yes, sir. Excuse me. Listen to me, Drogo Gaines. What do you think you're doing? Doctor. My goodness. We'd better put him on the couch. All right. Uh, lend me a hand. Okay. There we go. There appears to be no fever, and the pulse is normal. It must be a mental collapse. I'll phone for some assistance. Hey, Drogo. Come on, wake up out of this thing. Well, what now? Well, of all things, to happen to me. Yeah, happened to you. If you had married the dope two weeks ago, we'd have had the ten million, and we wouldn't care whether he did go goofy. Ma, it's all your fault. If you'd only let me marry Jerry Van Sniven. He had plenty of dough, and besides, I might have learned to love him. How did I know? Look at all the money Drogo's got. What are we going to do? We can't let those people eat all that food and stuff. Who's going to pay for it? You go out there and tell them it's been postponed. All right. Are you all right? Oh, yes, I'm all right. You mean to say that you heard everything we said? Yes. Oh, but I didn't do this for that reason. I was afraid to go out there. I realized what a momentous step I was taking. But now that I know where your affections really are, it's probably all for the best. All for the best? You're making a monkey out of me, leaving me at the altar? Well, I'm very sorry. But... Wait a minute. Everybody in this house thinks you're crazy. Now listen to me, Drogo Gaines. You're going to marry me or they're going to think you're crazy for the rest of your life. Oh, I don't understand. Helen, how are you going to influence those people? Help! Oh, help! Let, Let, me me go! Go! Let me 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 me go! Let 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 me Good morning, Mr. G. Would you mind telling me where I am? The Hopedale Club. Hopedale Club. I can't stay in a place like this. I'm sorry, Mr. G, but I'll have to refer your complaint to Dr. Thorndike. Now eat your breakfast like a good boy. I don't want any breakfast. Please, Mr. G, you mustn't. Dr. Thorndike! Oh, uh, pardon me. Have you the time? Oh, I'm sorry. I have my watch. Here, take mine. Oh, no. But listen... I... I want to see Dr. Thorndike. Just have a seat. Hey, OK. 
progressing splendor. I'll drop in and see me any time you like. Always glad to have you. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Mr. N, do you mind if I send Mr. G in ahead of you? Not at all. Well, well, Mr. Gaines, glad you dropped in. We'll call you Mr. G here. Are you feeling better? No, I'm not. I mean, I never felt bad. Oh, I well, mean... Now, don't excite yourself. I'm not exciting myself. I just want to get out of here. Of course, they all do at first, but you'll soon learn to like us. We like you. That's just dandy, Doc. And I'm sure that you and I and, and all the lads would become great chums. But really, I've got to get back to New York. What have you there, Mr. T? Oh, that? A well, man outside fastened a flower that he didn't have with a pin that isn't here. Would you mind letting me have that again, please? Oh, well, that is... He, he thought he had a pin that, it, that he put in a flower that, that I haven't got. The... Now, look, I was just... I understand perfectly. Wait a minute. A fellow simply gave me a flower. And a very pretty flower it is, too. Oh. Look, Doctor, there's nothing wrong with me. Of course, there's nothing wrong with you, Mr. G. Now, Doctor. Ooh! <laughs> Cute. Listen, Dr. Thorndike, I've had enough of this foolishness. You've got to let me go. But... Mr. Gaines, I hope you'll appreciate my position in this matter. I've no alternative but to keep you here until your conduct improves. But listen... Now, don't make it hard for yourself. Finish dressing and go out in the sun. We're allowing you the full run of the grounds. I'm sorry. I, I didn't know you were fishing. What did you think I was doing? Good fishing? Excellent. Caught many? Nope. Never catch any. It's a sort of new idea when it comes to fishing. Yes, you're brighter than I thought you were, Mr. Gaines. Sit down. Oh, you know me? I know all about you. Caraway's my name, Colonel Carlton Caraway. You've heard of Caraway Seeds. Well, I'm the whole corporation. <laughs> I didn't like the business, so I came here on my own accord. I like it here. No, I don't. I'm going to escape. <laughs> oh, no, you're not. The walls are too high. Why'd you come here if you don't want to stay? I didn't come. I pulled a little stunt in self-defense. Oh, yes. That Newton girl. While you were looking at her eyes, she was looking at your checkbook. Well, I didn't know. And Agnes. She kissed you when you bought her a yacht. You could have done better with a canoe. And that Argentine tomato, what was her name? Conchita Wantmazuma. You bought her bracelets and called her angel. And she said, Mi pichoncito eres pitolo. Sounded sweet, didn't it? Just means sucker. You certainly know a lot. Yes, that's why I'm here. Tell me, Colonel. How does a fellow know when he's found the right girl? The signs. Signs? Yes. I don't understand. Well, now, uh, supposing a girl uh, crossed her fingers and you crossed yours at the same time. That's a sign. Come on, it. What's the matter? Oh, I caught a fish. Well, I'll never be able to fish here anymore. Come on, young Drogo. What are you going to do now? I'm going to photograph the fish. Everybody does that. Are you leaving, Colonel? Yes, this place is no good. There's too many fish. Something I could do for you? No. Now, 
Now, this, Mr. G, is the Blooming Daisy. The what? The Blooming Daisy. Probably the finest camera ever invented by the human mind. Now, uh, don't let her frighten you, and don't ask how she works, or you'll spoil all the fun. Now, take one step forward, two backward, just a mite forward. Now, what are you playing? That's another invention of mine. I never focus the camera. Anyone can focus the camera. I focus you. Now, are you ready? Hold it. There you are. That merely takes the photograph. Now, we develop it. Come in. Good morning, Colonel. Good morning, Harry. Um, meet Mr. G. How do you do? How do you do? And now we shall see what we shall see. We release the gadget A, seize the Vingus B, and grasp the photograph C, and there you are. It's blank. Yes, that's the wonderful thing about the Bloomin' Daisy. You never can tell what's coming out. Sometimes I get the most amazing pictures. But not very often. Uncle Carlton, you're going to stay with me at the country place. Uh, Dr. Thorndike and I think you'll be much happier there. Oh, but Harry, I like it here. I know, but you've got to leave here sometime. You've been here long enough. People are starting to ask embarrassing questions. Oh, Harry. No, not another word. I know what's best for you. You get your things together, and I'll call for you in the morning. You understand? Yes. Uh, well, goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. G. G. I hope you have fun playing with your fish. I'm embarrassing him, that crackpot. Well, he seemed all right to me. Oh, he did, did he? Come here. Look at that. What's the matter with that? He's a member of the fire department. That's just it. He isn't. Well, most likely the whole thing's my fault anyway. When he was a little lad, I bought him a toy fire engine to play with. Said he wanted to be a fireman. He never outgrew it. He's been playing fireman ever since. Oh. Go to his country place. Why, the whole thing's nothing but a big fire department. He'll not get me up there. I'll, I'll run away. That's what I'll do. I'll escape. But you said you couldn't escape. No, I didn't. I said you couldn't. Didn't say I couldn't. If I had enough money to finance the Bloomin' Daisy, I'd escape tonight. Well, I have a uh, $120. $120? Say, say, that's enough to put the Bloomin' Daisy on a paying basis. But the Bloomin' Daisy won't even take a picture. Shh. You know that, and I know that. But the people we photographed wouldn't know it. Now, look, you meet me at the woods near the river at 9 o'clock tonight. Boy, we'll hit the open road. We'll meet people, real people, none of the money-grabbing kind. And don't forget to bring the money. Kept you so long. The fool guard didn't show up in time. It couldn't escape unless a guard was there. It wouldn't be strategic. Here, take that pole, knock those rocks off. The equipment's there. What for? The boat, of course. We've got a launcher. I knew this life would be too good to last, so I thought of this escape years ago. You call this thing a boat? Yeah, stop all that tittle paddle. Get this stuff on board. There you are. Here. Here, now give me a hand. All ashore is going ashore. How far do you expect to get in this thing? Who wants to get far? We just want to get. Heave ho, my hearty. Aubrey! Have Mr. Gaines sent to my office right away. Thank you, Dr. Thorndike. As Mr. Gaines' secretary, I can assure you there's absolutely nothing wrong with him. As his fiance, I can assure you that there is. Why, this whole thing is preposterous. I demand that he be released at once. And I demand that he be kept here. Why, the very idea. Dr. Thorndike. Yes? Mr. Gaines has escaped. Mr. Escaped? Gaines. Yes, and so has Colonel Carraway. This is terrible. Hello, Miss Wright. At once. Miss Wright, notify the police. Mr. Gaines and the Colonel have escaped. Fine night for sailing. The sea's as smooth as glass. We're not at sea. We're in the middle of the river. My feet are getting wet. Well, a little salt water never hurt anybody. That's not salt water. I never said it was. I made a statement, I'll stick by it. A little salt water never hurt anybody. Oh, you're impossible. This rat's impossible. 
It's probably sinking. Serve us right if we both drown. We never should have listened to you in the first place. Oh, playing the coward, eh? Why, this silly river's so shallow you could wade ashore at any time. It is? Well, I'm going to wait. This must be the wrong river. <laughs> silly old river's shallow, huh? Well, you must have hit an air pocket. This, what's that? Waterfalls. Waterfalls? Give me that thing, we'll go. That's a silly statement. People don't go over falls in rats. They only go over in barrels. Oh, stop that dribbling. Give me a hand. Well, that was a stuffy hole. Well, I can't really broke my neck. Destroying things, destroying people's property. I'll have you know, madam, that I have just perpetrated the most magnificent escape in my long and brilliant record of achievement. Escape? Well, that's it, eh? I might have known. Well, now that you know, would you mind telling me how to get to a telephone? Listen, you're not going anywhere to pay for what you broke. And a case of Cupid dolls cost nine bucks. Well, here's twenty dollars. Keep the change. I said nine bucks. No more and no less. That's the smallest I've got. You mean you don't want the extra money? No, why should I? Oh, what a girl. Come on, come on. Play up or I'll call the police. I have nothing smaller than a 20. Oh, yes. shoot! Hey, you're soaking wet. Oh, sure, I've been waiting. Here you are, my lad. Change into something of mine. I always carry extra equipment. Oh, no, I'm all right. Now, go ahead. We can't carry on with sick troops, you know. You can change behind the car. Make it snappy. Say, uh, what's he done? It isn't what he's done, gal. It's what he might do. His instincts, you know, are all bad. He's been a terrible trial to me, but I've done the best that I could. If he but had the love of a good woman, someone to bring out the finer things in him, to restore his self-respect, then again he could become a man among men. You own this? Yeah, the whole works. Bright lights, music, the gay, pleasure mad throngs. What throngs? Merely a figure of speech, my girl. Merely a figure of speech. Ladies and gentlemen, right over this way. Oh, come on, fellas. Hi, hello, Penguin. Glad to see you back. Hi, Alice. Uh, you got change for 20? Are they still making those things? It won't make you fat, it'll make you thin. Come on. Sweeter than an angel cake. I'll bear an even baker's dozen. That every bee that's buzzing tells its pretty flower you're his long lost cousin. When you promise me kisses, the filling in my sweet toothache. Because your lips are more enticing than grandma's chocolate icing. Yum, yum. the 
first lucky lady to get the dollar portrait for 25 cents. Right down that way, lady, after your left. As soon as we get changed for the $20, we're on our way. Now listen, young lady. I've been waiting long enough. Either you give me $120 or this show is a tax. Now, patience, Sheriff, patience. I do not like to be rushed while I am bathing. In fact, I like to soak. After 47 minutes, you ought to be waterlogged. Oh, you come right out of there, young lady, or I'm going to come over there and pull you up. Why, Sheriff, police, after all. Uh... What's going on here? I was waiting for the head of this here show to get out of the shower. Well, I'm the head of the show. Oh, you are. You blew Brownville last night, owing money to several citizens of our community for use of the lot gas, electricity, water. Matter of fact, you didn't pay for nothing. Just a minute, Sheriff. What is the attachment on this show? $120. $120. Well, there's your 100 and here's your 20 Now, thank you very much, Sheriff. That fixes up everything. Wait a minute, mister. I never ask anyone to pay off anything on my show. Who said I was paying off anything on the show? I merely want to buy the photographic concession for the Colonel. You mean you want to pay 120 bucks so the Colonel can use that blooming daisy around here? That's right. Well, let me tell you, mister, it ain't worth it. It's worth a lot more than that to me. Now, goodbye, Miss Moore, and thank you very much. Say, not a bad guy. And cute, too. Well, goodbye, Colonel, and lots of luck with the Bloomin' Daisy. Where are you going? Back to New York, of course. Uh, uh, that's my suit you got on. Oh, it is. Well, I'll send it back to you. Which one of you is Penguin Moore? I am what? Well, I'm Clem Prouty, owner of this flood, and I want that 20-buck rental in advance that she promised me. Well, say, can't you give us a little while? Nothing doing. I'll give you just 10 minutes to get the money. And either you'll put up or I'll pack up. And I'll be waiting right here. Wait a minute. I'll get 20 bucks from these yokels for my Indian remedy if it's the last act of my life. Now, where do you think you're going? Well, with you, of course. Nowhere else to go now that the source of livelihood's been cut off. What a pity. And to the lack of only $20. Oh, I never saw such a mess. There must be some way to make $20. Say, I've got another attachment on the Bloomin' Daisy that I saved for just such an emergency. Now, you put one here, one here, and one here. Well, I'll try anything once. Here you are, young lady. Take care of my bag for me. Sure, bud. Beg your pardon, stranger. You look like an intelligent person, one who'd be interested in making a little easy money. Sure, who's gonna mind me? I am. But in order to accomplish this feat, I shall have to secure a portion of your chewing gum. What good gum gonna do you? Ah, that's a secret. I've made hundreds of dollars that way. Now, we attach the little key to the chewing gum. We attach both to the interior of the shell. So. Follow me, stranger. I'll show you how it works. Well, 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 the shell game, eh? The object of this game is to find out which shell the little pea is under. I've had a lot of experience along that line. Say, your shoelace is untied, young fella. Tell you what I'll do, young man. I'll bet you $20 that I can tell you where the little pea is. I'll bet you 22 oh, 20's all I want. Uh, 20's the limit. Wait a minute. Take your money back. It was my idea. Oh, no, you don't. I had my money up first. You're unfair, sir. Took it, in fact. Just a minute, just a minute. Say, young fella, didn't I have my money down first? Yes, I guess you did. That gives you the first chance to play. Sorry, mister. What? It's an outrage. Money won that way will do you no good. Now, gentlemen, which shell hides the little pea? That, that one. one. It ain't there. No. Too bad, gentlemen, too bad. Better luck next time. It's amazing. The man must be a wizard. I'm glad I didn't bet any of my own money. And there you are, ladies and gentlemen, the great Indian princess Yo-Yo in the flesh. She speaks not a word of anything but her native tongue. Now she brings this tonic to you from the sands of the desert, the rocks of the mountains, the land of the mighty red man. Now you've never seen a sick Indian. <laughs> They're all big, strong, mighty men of nature. And why are they all big, strong, mighty men? Because...
Lord, they use Princess Yo-Yo's Indian tonic exclusively. And now, my good people, this wonderful remedy is worth $5 a bottle. But we're not going to charge you $5. Oh, no. Nor $2. Nor $1. No, sir. You're going to buy this wonderful tonic for just 25 cents. And because of the great affection the princess has for the people of this community, with every two-bit purchase, we're going to give you a bowl made by the princess's own brother, Eagleby. Now you say to yourself, what will I do with just a bowl? Well, we'll tell you. With every 25 cent purchase of the Princess Yo-Yo's tonic, we're going to throw in an arrow so that you have the tonic and the bow and arrow all for the trifling sum of 25 cents. Come on now, folks, step up and get that first bottle. Don't miss this amazing opportunity to buy this great tonic for 25 cents a bottle or five bottles for one dollar. Let me just take one bottle and pass it down among you. Just pull the cork out of that, my friend, and take a smell. And don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, that you get a bow and an arrow free with this purchase. Miss Jinx, Only here's the $20 you need. Would you mind keeping an eye on the Colonel's camera for me? Why, sure. Thank you. OK. And now, folks, step right up and get your box. Well, Colonel, where's he going? He thinks he's going to New York. He's the constable now. I'm constable. Constable, there's your man right there. And I am as guilty as he is. You come along with me, too, then. You can't finagle me out of money, you city slickers. First, you make me look ridiculous with that fish. Then you almost drown me on that silly raft of yours. Next, we become entangled with a broken-down carnival. And you get a bright idea on how to acquire $20, and we land in jail. You'd kept your mouth shut. I would have been on my way to New York right now. Are you sure you told that girl to take good care of the blooming daisy? A couple of tough fellas. They put up a great struggle, but I took them single-handed. Nobody ever gets away from me. Gee, hossifats. I told you they was desperate. They must have dynamited. Well, this looks like an outside job. You realize we've broken the law of leaving the jail in that manner? Well, let's go back. Maybe you can think of a better way. Miss Moore's liable to get herself into serious trouble. If we're caught, she'll be as guilty as we are. Don't think she doesn't know it. She's one of those regular people I've been telling you about. Let it go. with you. The cops might be here any minute. You know what to do. Right. You come with me. Oh, Miss Moore, don't, don't you think... Don't argue. Come on. Oh, Miss Moore, hmm? if you get a chance to talk with him, uh, keep your fingers crossed for me, will you? Okay, Colonel. She sure isn't giving herself the worst of the deal, is she? <laughs> come on, Snapshot, will you? Give me a hand. Welcome home. Don't make yourself at home. Oh, thanks. Moore, I want you to know that I appreciate what you've done for us. Oh, skip it. You got my shoe out of a jam, and I got you out of one. A piece of pie. Thank you. Do you always put salt on your apple pie? Sure, why? Well, I put salt on mine, too. So what? Well, Miss Moore, don't you think that could be a sort of a sign? <laughs> sure it is. It's a sign we both like salt in our apple pie. You know, you're not a bad-looking guy. Talk like you've been to school. The kind of a fellow that any girl might fall for. Nothing wrong, though, is your instincts are all bad. My instincts? Yeah, they're kind of crooked, if you ask me. Why, Miss Moore, I want you to know that my business integrity has never been questioned. Oh, uh, stop talking like a gentleman of circumstance. You mean you don't like gentlemen of circumstance? I should say not. Gentleman is just a polite word for loafer, if you ask me. Oh, why don't you get an honest job and go to work? You might make something out of yourself. I'll keep my fingers crossed for you. You did it. Did what? You crossed your fingers. So what? Well, Miss Moore, that is a sign. Now, wait a minute. What is the sign language? Well, when a boy and a girl both cross... What's that? 
It ain't the curfew. This is it, Morse Carnival. All right, Sheriff, you go that way, I'll go this way. We'll search every truck. Right. A couple of jailbreakers. There ain't no privacy when desperate criminals is at large. I got every reason to believe they're right with this carnival. Well, you don't think I'd have them in here, do you? You never can tell. Pardon, ladies, but I'm looking for a couple of fugitives. Fugitives? Mm. Only if you find anybody, you save the prettiest one for me, will you? Mm, very funny. <laughs> well, any success? No, not a trace of them. Well, what do we do now? Well, I think we'd better get to a telephone and notify every sheriff in the state. That's a good idea. Excuse me, Sheriff. I'd like to suggest my remaining here and keeping an eye open, uh, just in case. Well, it'll be all right with me. Thank you, sir. I'd like to be of some help. If there's anything I can do. Why, sure you can be a help. As a roustabout in this show, you probably won't be worth your salt, but at least it's an honest job. Go back and tell the girls to come up here and you bunk with the Colonel. A roustabout? Yeah, a roustabout. Oh, thank you. Gentlemen. Good morning. Ready for breakfast? Ho oh, ho! Breakfast servant right here. No hurry. We usually work a little around here before we eat. Work? Yeah. Put those on. I protest. I'm a concessionaire with this carnival and I wear what I please. I don't care how you dress so long as you pound those tent steaks. A little work never hurt anybody. 
Good morning, Miss Moore. Oh, hiya, Joe. Oh, Miss Moore, I've had a pretty good offer from the Jones Show. It isn't that I want to leave, but I have a wife and kid back in Connecticut. Oh, I understand, know. Joe. I don't blame you. Well, your pay's been a little slow, but... Well, we'll get along all right. I'll send you back pay as soon as we have a few good days. Oh, forget it. Any time. Oh, trooper's nothing. If I could ever get paid, I'd quit this dump in a minute. What are you crabbing about? Crabbing? She hasn't paid me a dime in months. Don't you ever think of anything else besides money? Why don't you try smiling once in a while? You know. <laughs> Laugh and the world laughs with you, you oh, know. Oh, baloney. Oh, why don't you try being like me? Oh, that's too much. <laughs> Very funny. But at least I like everybody. I'm a little happy. Did you ever see any... Oh, oh no. Wait, lest I go through all this again. Really, I have enough trouble. Bye. Oh. oh, now, wait a minute. Let's get this thing straight. You see, I'm really not an Indian. <laughs> Only kidding with that yo-yo stuff, you know. Just kidding. In fact, I was born in Brooklyn. You know, Brooklyn of the Oh, oh now, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Mr. Gaines. Oh, good morning, Stan. Oh, good morning to you, sir. I've been dreadfully worried about you. A man of your position in an environment of this kind. <laughs> Don't worry about me. I'm all right. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Is there something I can do for you, sir? No, nothing at all. Well, if you're not too busy, you might try pounding some steaks for me. No, Colonel, that would never do. Just stay around in the background. I'll see you later. Yes, sir. Come on, Colonel. Oh, ho ho! What an invigorating morning! I'm ready for an order of scrambled eggs, a rasher of bacon, and a huge pot of coffee. All uh -huh. right, you guys. Start pounding this row of steaks and that row of steaks over there. Then you can eat breakfast. I protest. I'm a concessionaire. So am I a concessionaire, but we pound steaks around here before we eat. I said that I would... I said pound that steak. Yes, sir. Oh, say, just a minute. What's on your mind? How would you like to be the head man of the best carnival in the world? Who wouldn't? Well, how much would it cost? About 200 grand. I'd like to have you pick one up for me. Wouldn't you like a nice new electric train set, too? No, wait a minute. You don't understand. Stand up! What a punk like you get, 200 grand. Yes, sir. A blank check, please. Yes, sir. I want you to accompany this gentleman. I'm going to buy a carnival. A carnival, yeah. sir? Yes. Just fill this check in for any amount necessary. I want the very best. Do you understand? Yes, Mr. Gaines. Say, listen, if this check bounces back on me, I'm going to bounce right back on you. I beg your pardon. You're speaking about Mr. Gaines. We never have check trouble. Now, if you'll just come with me, we'll attend to everything. <clears throat> hey, this is all over my head. I don't understand. Now, let me know when it's ready. Yes, sir. Take care of your own steak. I'm having trouble enough with this one. You pound this roll. I'll pound the other one. Okay. Okay, boys. Hey, Colonel, come on over and help with these. You'll do no such thing. But a fine job, Colonel. Your steaks are all down. You go ahead and have breakfast. Thank you, Miss Moore. Thank you. <laughs> oh, good morning, Miss Moore. So you can't even pound a few steaks without hollering for help, huh? Oh, I, I didn't mean... You notice the Colonel finished all of his, don't you? Oh, yes, but he... Don't he... interrupt. Look, you pound these steaks before breakfast, and if you can't do that, well, you just be right on your way. Well, hi, officer. Hope you like our show this year. All right, can that. As sheriff of this town, I order you to pack up your troop and get moving. And the sooner the better. Oh, but why? Well, I got word from the last town that you hit that you're carrying a couple of crooks with you. So come on, get going. Oh, now look, Sheriff. There's... I said get going. Okay. All right, boys, pack it up. I beg your pardon, Sheriff, but I believe if you give me a moment, I can straighten out this little misunderstanding. Can that stuff? No, no, no. I want to present you with a portrait to take home to your wife. 
Oh, well, that sounds all right. There you are. You stand right there, not too far away here, while I extend the lens. Turn the little wheel. Yes. And pull the bulb. Are you ready? Yes. Hold it. That's it. I've had great success with these family portraits. Yes. Now, if you'll bear with me just a moment, as we go through the developing process here, and pull the little string here, I believe I'll show you something that your wife's going to be very happy about. <laughs> <laughs> So you're a fresh guy, huh? Now you grab that thing and get out of town before I run you in. Swing it, hit it, pull it, tie it. Swing it, hit it, pull it, tie it. Swing it, hit it, pull it, tie it. Bop, bop, a doo 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 da. Whoa, Kalaya Pijane, put on your bonnet and blue for game. I hope the new carnival will be the finest thing on wheels. I want to make Penguin really happy. Now listen, young Grogo. Your idea of romance is a yacht here, a bracelet there, an ermine coat thrown in, and now a new carnival. Why, you're just a checkbook lover. Don't you know by this time that this girl is different? an expert at this. Oh, thanks. Matter of fact, you've been doing so well lately that I've decided to promote you to a better job. Oh, that's great. Well, what's it going to be? <laughs> Here's your new outfit. Put it on tonight and uh, you'll understand. Oh, no. You again. How? Listen, for the last time, I am not an Indian. Please, what is this? You and oh, here, look, no comic Valentines. Now go away. I'm busy. Colonel, I can't go out there like this. Why not? You look beautiful. That's just the trouble. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the feature of free attractions the show. The world's greatest aerial artiste. The one and only Miss Penguin Moore, assisted by Donald Cavalier. Okay, officer. We'll be on our way. But listen, girl. Can't you see your way to give him another chance? Well, you saw what happened tonight, Colonel. I gave him a chance, but 
He just doesn't belong in show business. Oh, oh, that's funny. What's funny about that? Doesn't belong in show business. Well, I don't suppose you ever heard of the great Drogo. The great Drogo? Feature act of every show he ever played in. Drogo? Drogo? Aerialist? Mm -mm. Drogo. Equestrian? Mm -mm. Well, there was a Rogo. Rogo's Lion Act. Or was it Drogo? Drogo's Lions. Was that it? I didn't say it, girl. Now remember, I didn't tell you. Oh, but Drogo's Lions. That was the greatest act that ever played under the big top. Well, I can see it now. London, Paris, Vienna, the applause of thousands. What made him give it up? What's that? Why, there he stood, night after night, with guns in his hands. Then came a time when the animals weren't enough. Oh, forget the past. He'll come back, girl. He'll come back. I feel like a fool, Colonel. Imagine me making him pound steaks in a silly two-by-four show like this. Making out like I was a big shot. I gotta talk to him, Colonel. Drogo, come here. Oh, I'm very busy, Miss Moore. I want to talk to you. Well, Miss Moore, I want you to know that I'm sorry about what happened in your act. Well, I'll try to make up for it in any way I can. Oh, forget about it, Drogo. And Stop tearing yourself out with the stuff around here. Oh, that's very nice of you, Miss Moore. I didn't ever expect you to speak to me again. Don't talk like that, Drogo. You make me feel so foolish. I think I've been making you pound steaks and do things around here that any kid could do. I want to learn all I can and help. You're going to. You're going to go right back to the top where you belong. You won't get in with the wrong people this time, because I'll take the guns out of your hands every night. Guns? Certainly nice of you, Miss Moore, but I Now, don't... you don't have to say anything. I know we're going to get along swell together from now on. <sighs> Colonel, what do you think? What? Miss Moore just spoke to me and forgave me for what I did to her act. She was so sweet, I can't get over it. She said we'd get along swell together. But certainly you'll get along swell together. Why shouldn't two great showmen get along swell together? What do you mean? I don't know anything about the show business. Well, I know you don't, and you know you don't, but... Uh, but what? Well, I told her you were a great showman. Oh, Colonel, why did you tell her a thing like that? Well, you're an imposter, aren't you? Well, isn't it better to be a good imposter than a bad one? What kind of a showman did you tell her I was? Well, I, uh, I told her you were a lion tamer. A lot. A lot. Colonel, come back here. Why did you tell her that? Well, there are no lions with this show. No. Well, what have you got to worry about? Oh, boys! Put this stuff in the truck over there. Willie, you come with me. Yes, ma'am. he could tame a cat. Just then I claim all that tiger. The tiger now holds a guy's hat. So can I up his Penguin, how are you? Oh, fine. Sorry to get you up at this hour. Oh, that's all right. We couldn't sleep anyway. What's on your mind? Well, I got a spot in my show for your lions. You still got them, haven't you? Sure, there they are. Come on. Say, I got the best lion trainer in the business. How about letting me take them and then the season will split? Well, it's okay with me if it's okay with Mo. It's okay with me, Joe. Matter of fact, I'm glad you came. We were just talking about turning them over to the zoo. Business has been so bad, we can't even feed them. Take a peek. They don't look underfed to me. Me either. In fact, they look powerful healthy. There's nothing to worry about. All you gotta do is follow the instructions in this book. Gives you their names, the tricks they do, and everything. Well, that's swell. Here you are, Willie. Read it over carefully. From now on, you're taking care of them. 
Come on, let's go. Okay, we'll give you a hand. You mean... I guess you do. Nero, roll, roll. Nero? Nero? Nero, roll, roll. That did it. Good morning, Miss Moore. Good morning, Georgia. I think you ought to know that what the Colonel said Oh, was... don't blame him. I'm happy to know that you're one of us. Well, I certainly do want to be one of us. There's something I want you to have. It belonged to my dad. He was a lion trainer, too. Oh, thanks. Drogo, I want you to know how I feel about your scenes with both showmen. I liked you from the start, but that was as far as it could ever go because, well, I had no idea you were my kind. Miss Moore, I think you ought to know the truth. Never mind. It's what's going to happen that counts. Well, I'll certainly do my best. You have any scratches on you? Didn't the lions ever claw you or jump you? To tell the truth, they never did. Gosh, you must have been great. Wouldn't you like to take up where you left off, cracking the whip and hearing the applause? Wouldn't you do it for me? I guess I'd do just about anything for you. Well, here they are. Not much after what you've had, but it's the beginning. They're lions. Don't expect too much of them, because they haven't been worked for quite a while. You gonna train them loud? Uh oh. Oh, it's no use, Colonel. I can't go through with it. Now, don't be silly. Now, look, you're a millionaire, aren't you? What's that got to do with it? Everything. Why, you'd be the first millionaire lion tamer in the world. Think of the honor. And besides, I'm sure that nothing will happen to you. Those lions are easy to work with, aren't they, Willie? That's what it says here. There, you see? Now, look, I'm going to show you once more. You need have no fear. Why, no lion has ever been known to pass a chair. Now, you advance boldly. Chair in one hand and whip in the other. <laughs> through with it. Well, you love her, don't you? All you've got to do is to remember what I told you. When you get in that cage, keep chatting with that chair and cross with your whip. Listen to them, boy, listen. What a crowd. Hurry up, Joker. We can't hold it much longer. They're waiting for you. The lions? No, the people, silly. Gosh, you look wonderful. Now go on out there and knock them cool. Tell me, Colonel, is he thrilled? Thrilled is not the word for it. He's trembling, but with anticipation. You want to go in now? No. No, I've got a better idea. There. Up. Places. Nero. Caesar. Up. Benedict. What's he trying to do, Colonel? He's working the cats from the outside. Yeah. Well, you wouldn't expect the great Drogo to do the usual thing. Anybody can work lions from the inside of a cage. What a man. He's working them from the outside. Oh, that, that may be swell, Colonel, but I don't think these yokels understand that. I'll tell them to do it the easy way. Yoko, I think you better do it the regular way. Oh, I knew it fine from out here. Well, I know, but these people don't understand. I think you better work on the inside. Okay, folks, everything will be fine in just a minute. What happened to happen to me? 
What's going to happen to you? Well, can't you see? The rain is going to ruin the act. We can't put it on. Ow! Oh. Willie, put him away! Yes? Wonderful girl, Penguin. Real, sincere, different. Yes, the others are all alike, but she's different. I know, my boy, I know. Love, love, what follies are committed in thy name. That's Francis Bacon. Speak low, if you speak love. That's William Shakespeare. Love is like hash. You've got to have confidence in it to enjoy it. That must have been Bob Hope. Well, go to sleep, my boy, or uh, are you? Good morning. Oh, 
Oh, yes, uh, Miss Newton. Mr. Newton? Oh, Mr. Whitman. Uh, yes, Bates, what is it? Begging your pardon, sir. But I'm afraid we have gypsies on the ground. Gypsies? Well, Bates, uh, do something. Get rid of them right away. Uh, yes, sir, right away, sir. Oh, wait a minute, Bates. Do you speak gypsy? Oh, no, sir. Oh, never mind. I'll go myself. Order the chief's car right away. Yes, sir. Come on, boys. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Come up this way. Hear all about the big surprise I promised you. What surprise? Come on. What everybody. Surprise? This way, everybody. <laughs> now, listen, boys and girls. I told you I'd bring you to the land of plenty. Well, here it is. Why, the food lies on the ground for the taking. Did you say food? Right. Groceries, grub, victuals. Now, some of you go that way and pick the berries from the vines. The peas, beans, cabbages, and other vegetables are that way. Let your stomachs be your guide. Pick on! And the watermelons are that way. Oh, Willie. Yes, Mr. Cullen. And the chicken house is over there. Chicken house? Uh-huh. What am I waiting for? I don't know. Me either. Tell who. <laughs> Joe, what's the idea of pitching here? Colonel's orders. Colonel's orders? Well, what are we going to get for customers here, field mice? Quiet, quiet. You know, you squawk. We all got to go someday. It's either going to be you or me. It ain't going to be me. Take your time. Take your time. Don't rush me. The man's right. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, will you fix the files, please? Please? Oh, wait a minute. What's the line? I love it. Say, Red, where'd you get these? Well, the Colonel told us we could pick anything we wanted to. Oh, he did, eh? Well, I'm still giving orders around here, I think. I come right down. Get this stuff out of here. Yes, and Miss Moore, but the Colonel said... I don't care what the Colonel said. We're not taking anything that doesn't belong to us. Now, put it back where you got it. Yeah, make it snappy. We'll all be thrown in the clink. Sound like we were practically in the clink. All right, fellas, get rid of it quick. All right, you heard the boss. Get rid of it. Come on, put a move on. What's going on around here? That's it. Come on, get going. Come on, get going. Well, well. It's a shame not to put back these tender boys. Wait. Are they very tender? That would be kind of a shame, wouldn't it? Uh, uh, in that box. Come on. Be careful, but hurry. Come on. Get going. Now sit down. Hi. Now, uh, act nonchalant. What do you mean, trespassing on private property? Now, don't get excited, mister. You've got us all wrong. Oh, well, have I? Mm hmm. Well, then, I'm, I'm very sorry. You see, I'm Penvin Moore, and this is my carnival. We got lost last night and wound up here. We didn't know it was your property, but we didn't take anything. Well, if you didn't take anything, I guess there's no harm done. You've got quite a display. Would you like to look around? Oh, I'd love to. Do you mind? Oh, not at all. It's a pin game over there. I hate pins. Oh, well, here's a merry-go-round. Oh, no, that makes me dizzy. Well, we've got a lot of other things here that... What's this contraption? Oh, this is a taffy machine. Would you like to see it work? Oh, well, may I? Okay, Bob, I'll take care of it. Okay, Mr. Mechanical Bob. devices intrigue me. Well, here's a switch here, you see. And you put it down, the machine goes around with the taffy on it. Uh-oh. Mm. What'll they take up next? The most interesting part down there was the motor is. You're right. It's a dandy. My favorite gear ratio. Fifteen to one. What I saw? Why, did you see something? Let's forget it. Farmers in the dell. Farmers in the dell. Hey, nanny, nanny, no. Boop, 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 boop. The farmers in the dell. Farmers in the dell. Farmers in the dell. Oh, hey, you said you didn't 
take anything, eh? Well... Drop that jewel, thief. Thief? Oh, pardon the jewel. Well, certainly it's me. Who did you expect? I can't tell you how happy I am to see you. I've been quite worried. Well, Harry, your worries are over. Come over here. I want you to meet a friend of mine. Oh, Penguin. Uh, this is my nephew, Harry Whitman. I'm one of his uh, poor relations. How do you do? Oh, we've met. Well, good. Then we can get down to business. How many weekend guests have you? Oh, we have a whole house full. There's the Van Swiggins, the Mortons, the Dumont. That's enough. The Graham. I said that's enough. Have them all come down here. I guarantee they'll have a better time than they had in days, weeks, years. If it's that good, I'll tell them. Gangway! Tell them not to forget their wallets. Here, give that sign, son. Yes, sir. That's it. Now go right ahead with your work. You have little pieces of business to do here. They'll never know the difference. Ten cents to a dollar. They'll never know the difference when you hear them holler. Well, our troubles are over. Happy days are here to end. Don't you think you've raised the prices too much? Too much? Why, these people couldn't have a good time unless they paid too much. All right, boys, go to work. All right, everybody. this way, folks, and we'll go through the developing process. There you are, passes through the little hill and the little handle, and the photograph drops into the little tank. There's a charming portrait of yourself and family, and the price is five dollars. Right this way, But it's blank. That may surprise you, but it doesn't surprise me. The price remains the same. Thank you. Do you mind getting out of the way, please? How about that man over there with that? Go out of taffy, dear. Having fun? Oh, yes, and I appreciate you letting me run the machine. Oh, that's all right. So you can sell the taffy, too, if you like. Oh, may I? I'd be delighted. Coffee, coffee. What do you mean we ain't got no coffee. right here? The paddles are still free for a dollar. A dollar? What, a dollar for a ten-cent game? Well, Bob, yes. come with me. Anybody else? Coffee, coffee. Listen, buddy, you don't have to get tough. Well, who's getting tough? Just a minute. I'm sorry, boys, but we're putting the show on for a private party. I'll have to ask you to leave. Oh, be nice, baby. You wouldn't want us to go now, would you? Oh, so it's one of those things. Okay, do it the hard way. That's all I wanted to know. All right, just a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, you ain't heard the last of this. No. Anyway. No. Here you are, ladies and gentlemen. Three straight. One dollar. One dollar. Thirteen hundred. You can do better than that, baby. Let's try it again. Come on. Three straight for a dollar, folks. Oh, you'll never do it that way, mister. Stand back and I'll show you. The muscles needed. Amazing. <laughs> Introducing the one, the only, Philly Strogo. Daredevil of the arena. Fearless drug. Don't start huh? to leave me. Oh, Couldn't be. No waiting, no delay. I Purchase your tickets right away. Excuse me. Think of it, folks. A beer, two dollars and fifty cents. Here we go, folks. Don't rush, don't crowd. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Come on, folks. You see one of the best shows you ever saw in your life. Get in and now and give them everything you've got. But listen, Penguin, you don't know this, but I no, really. Buts. This is your chance to get back on top, and you're going to take it. But I can. Hope everything goes all right. Yes. Hello. Steady, boy. See you, sir. When a lion gets mad, he riffles up. Mad. Playboy is more cuckoo than I thought he was. Right. 
Hey, boss, that ain't in the book. Look out, Mr. Jogo, here comes the lion. I can run 40 miles an hour. I'm sorry, really. I told you I'd beat you to the land of plenty. <laughs> Who's cage for his scares? Who? Rushing here, rushing there. Nowhere to go. What's going on in there? The lion's loose. Lions? If I'm gonna hunt for lions, I gotta get me some bait. Chasing lions all the time. He ain't dead. Kitty, kitty. Sure hope I don't find him. There's more sure gonna be mad. And now I'm cheating all them people. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Where's that lamp at? Caught him that time. I gotta be more careful. My blood pressure won't stand it. Kitty, kitty. Nice baloney. Come on, kitty, kitty. Kitty, kitty. Nice baloney. Get in there. Was that me talking? for a private party. Well, this is my private party. How about it, boys? Yeah. Wait a minute. You heard what the lady said. Now get going. Oh, glamour boy, huh? Well, ooh, oh, 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 oh. Oh, 
I've been looking all over for you. I got, I got the new kind of a pocket portisville. What should I do with it? Go back and take care of it. I'll get in touch with you later. Yes, sir. Disarranged. Well, never mind. I'll have everything fixed. <laughs> there you are. What more can you ask? Meantime, let's celebrate by coming up to my house and having dinner. Oh, I'd be delighted, sir. But I haven't a thing to wear. That tent, the house is full of clothes. May I? Why, certainly. <laughs> I'm in an awful predicament. The new carnival's over at Portersville. What am I going to do? New carnival? Yes. Good, good. Now, you run along with the rest of them and leave everything to me. Yes, but I've got... Go right ahead. Now, don't you worry. Hey, George. Yes, Colonel. Do you still burn the barn down every weekend? Yes, sir. Tonight? Nine o'clock sharp. Fine. Fine! Hey, boy! Come here! Get it out! Hurry, hurry, hurry! Now, wait a minute. I want you to wrap up this carnival and put it in that big barn on the road about a half a mile. Then I want you all to go over to Portersville. There's a new carnival over there, bigger and better. I want you to help set it up. Now, come on, get going. Right, 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 right. Hey, hello. Penguin, you're beautiful. Well, I'm charmed, Miss Ball. Dinner is served, sir. Thank you, Bates. Like this way, everyone, for the victory dinner. Oh, no. Keep your hands off that chair. I've had that one pulled on me before. As you wish, madame. Okay. You know, I'm awfully happy that they have chicken tonight. I never eat anything but chicken. That's water. <laughs> one, two, three, four. A four-legged chicken. <laughs> That's cute, a four-legged chicken. <laughs> Three-legged chicken. Oh, three-legged yeah. chicken. There's a novelty, a three-legged chicken. Oh, uh, what's the idea? Oh, uh, you wouldn't like that. That's no good. Uh, no good. Well, here we are, back to normal again. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of muscular, isn't it, huh? It's nearly 9 o'clock, sir. Oh, so it is, Bates. Uh, shuffled well? Yes, sir. All right, everyone, let's hurry with the usual drawing for positions on the fire trucks to see who the lucky people are. Will you draw, Uncle Carl? Yes. Oh, mine's a blank. Better luck next time. Well, I'll drive the chemical truck. That's nice. I'll just ride along with Mr. Gaines. Why, Colonel, this is not a blank. You two ride on the chemical wagon. By the way, Harry, what are you burning tonight? Oh, the same old barn. Oh, that's terrible. What's the matter, Uncle Carl? Well, how was I to know that you're still burning the same old barn? 
In order to save the carnival from the hoodlums, I have the boys hide it in the barn. You mean the carnival's on fire? I mean exactly that. Oh, my carnival? Well, well, how was I to... Oh, oh, Think I ought to do the driving? Don't be silly. I've been pushing trucks around all my life. Oh, I let it go!